welcome back. I'm Andrea Jean, and this channel is dedicated to cleaning and organizing for busy women. So if that is you, hit the subscribe button and join the community. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about 10 easy ways to help you declutter your home and make it a space that you never wanna leave. Make sure you stay till the end so you do not miss my number one tip to help you keep a decluttered home. This first tip is gonna be super helpful for all you mamas out there that have kids that love their artwork. Now, I definitely love the artwork from my kids, but I can't save every single piece of it because it would take over our entire house. So whenever my kids bring artwork home, what I'll do is I'll put it in a pile on our kitchen counter and I'll leave it there for a couple days and kind of decide if it's something that they're really interested in or passionate about. And more often than not, they've actually forgotten about the artwork. So I'll go through it, pick out those items, and then the stuff that I don't want, I will just throw in the garbage when they're not looking, of course. And then some of it I will hang up here on the wall. I got these clips at the Target dollar spot, I believe, several years ago, but this is something that you could easily make. But I will just clip a few of their art pieces up here, especially if it's seasonal, like Christmas or spring or Easter. And then as seasons change or it's time to replenish the artwork, I'll just take it down and again, put it in the garbage where they can't see it, and then I will just replace it with some new stuff. Now for those really important pieces of artwork, maybe it's something that they made at home or at school, but it symbolizes an important transition or period in their life. I have a binder for each of my kids. Now I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and an 11-month-old. My 11-month-old binder has not much in it, but it will in time as he becomes more creative and crafty and just loves to explore with all the art supplies. But I'll take those pieces of art that have a lot of meaning or something that they really spent a lot of time in, and I'll put it in this binder. That way, as they become older, maybe in high school, we can look back on those things and just kind of trigger our memories from experiences in their life and the activities that we did. You ultimately can decide how big of a binder that you want. Maybe you have multiple binders. My goal at this point is just to have one binder and be very judicious about the items that I put in here. I've also seen some parents do filing systems where they will file it by grade, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, so on and so forth, and they will put it in there. But for me, I really like the binder system. It's easy for me to tuck away, less storage space, and it's something that they could easily take with them if they wanted to when they were grown adults. Now, let's talk paint supplies. Me and my husband, we've lived in several apartments, townhouses, we've owned a couple homes, and those paint supplies can add up and accumulate. But where do you keep them all for a time that you're gonna need them again? It's not something that you use on an everyday basis, generally speaking. So here is what we do to help keep our paint supplies organized and easy to find. Here I have this old grocery cart box. This is something I purchased a long time ago, I think in college when I was moving but we have saved it and it has been durable. You can choose whatever size box that you want. Maybe you want something a little bit more decorative. Maybe you just have a regular old box lying around, but put it all in that box and try to keep it somewhat organized in there. It doesn't have to be super put together, but just so you can get all the items in there that you need. And I would recommend putting everything in this box. You can organize it however you like. You can see here, ours is just kind of put in there, but as long as it fits, that's all that matters. But I would put these stir sticks, the paint brushes, any sort of paint cans. If you use any sort of drop cloths, you can also fold those up really tightly and nice and then place them in the box. Put them in a designated spot in your garage or in your basement, somewhere where the temperature is not too variable. That way, when you need those supplies again, you can just easily grab them and use them for your next painting job. Let's talk books. I have an affinity for books, especially going to grad school. I had tons of books that I thought maybe that I would look through someday to find resources and just, I had some nostalgia attached to those books, but they can really add up and take up a ton of space. So what I recommend doing is really going through all your books and physically touch every single one of them and decide, is this a book that you're actually gonna pick up and read again? Or if it's more of an academic book, is this a place where you would probably research on the internet? Or are you more inclined to actually go inside the book and find what you need? Chances are you would probably look something up on the internet because you have some trusted, reliable sources or journals that you may use to find the information. Make a big pile of those books if you have several of them. And you can actually choose to resell these books. I ended up bringing a lot of my old textbooks to half price books and I got a decent amount of money back. And this is really helpful, especially when we were going through our debt-free journey. We wanted any extra cash that we could possibly use. Also, it was really nice to declutter and get rid of those books that did have sentimental value attached to them because all the long studying hours and um, 
but I was never really actually gonna use them again. I do have a few books that I still hold onto that mean a lot to me and that I will likely read again, but now what I use is Audible, especially being a busy mom of three and a working mom, it's really important to me to have easy access to books. So if I'm driving to the gym or I'm driving my kids in the car someplace, I can easily put on my Audible book and it's a win-win. A, it's more convenient and B, it takes a very minimal space. Recipe books, these are something that can accumulate so easily. I think at one point we probably had 20 recipe books. And to be honest with you all, I didn't actually go through many of them and use the recipes in the books. So here's a method that was really helpful for me, especially when it comes to decluttering those recipe books. I went through all my recipe books and decided which recipes in there do I actually use and love and will I make again? And I made a copy of those recipes or I wrote them down really quickly. And what I did is I created my very own binder with all of our favorite family recipes. Now, moving forward, if there's a recipe that I love or that I want to try, I will put it here in this binder and then I will go through and make notes of things that I want to change or add next time. So it's very efficient, keeps things nice and compact, and that way our kitchen is not cluttered with recipe books. I love cooking, but I do not like the clutter. Let's talk Tupperware. I know in many homes this is a pain point. Tupperware just adds up, you can't find what you need, and it just becomes this big jumbled mess of plastic or glass, whatever you choose. So here is something that I found really helpful when it comes to decluttering that Tupperware. Anytime that you decide that you're gonna throw away an item, maybe it has been overused or maybe it no longer serves the function that it did, find the corresponding lid to that item and also recycle or discard it. That way you don't have an uneven amount of lids to bottoms or bases. Next, if you're looking for organizational items to help you organize your Tupperware, you could definitely check out the Dollar Tree. They have a ton of items there for just a buck or head on over to Amazon and you can find a whole slew of organizing items. So here's how we sort our Tupperware, and it is so convenient, so easy, and this system is so maintainable. It's also really helpful because my kids know where to put these items. You can see here we don't have any sort of organizational objects to help us, just one big drawer. What we have here on the left-hand side are all the lids. Now they are not stacked in any particular order, just as long as they're lined up here and stacked against one another is just fine in our book. And you can see here around the perimeter in the back and on the right-hand side, we have have all of the Tupperware containers and they are just simply stacked by shape. And again, like I said, when it's time to discard a Tupperware item, go ahead and make sure you find the corresponding lid or container so that you do not have an excess or uneven number of both of those items. Make sure that you have a space big enough to organize all of your Tupperware in one simple spot. And if you do not have a space big enough, maybe make some decisions around, do you need all this Tupperware? Chances are you have way more than enough. I know the stuff contained here in my drawer, we have plenty here. We probably do not even use a quarter of the items in here. So we could probably go ahead and declutter this Tupperware drawer even a little bit more. All right, my next tip has to do with makeup, you all. This is all the makeup that I own, and I know this is really crazy and may seem a bit unattainable to many of you, but bear with me. I'm gonna share some tips that will be really helpful. Now, maybe you don't have this little amount of makeup, but here are some tips that will help you reduce the amount that you have and decrease the overall clutter that you have when it comes to your makeup. Go through all your makeup and touch each item and decide is this a product that you are gonna use or not, or maybe you're just holding on to it because it is a great product but maybe it's not the right shade or color for you. Go ahead and donate those items if you haven't used them or discard them. Touch every single makeup item and then really find a space in your bathroom or for me, it's this makeup bag here and decide if this is something that you want to keep. And if it is, make a special space for it. Now for me, one of my weaknesses are lipsticks and lip glosses. So I really try to be mindful when I'm wanting to purchase a new lipstick or lip gloss. So if you have a weak area, maybe it comes to eyeshadow, just try to be really mindful that when you do bring items into your home, it's things that you absolutely love. Maybe for some of you this is a ton of makeup but I think all of us if we have makeup of some sort of another we can always be going through it and deciding is this a product that we're actually going to use and if it isn't it's time to say bye bye makeup. Mail. 
thumbs up if the mail just seems to pile up in your home like crazy. Here's a system that has really worked for our family. Anytime new mail comes into our home, I make a couple piles, one for my husband to go through, one that's gonna be junk, and one for me if it pertains to bills or something for my kids' school or activities. I will go ahead and take that garbage, throw it right away in there. My husband has his own separate pile on his computer, so I will set it there for him, and he goes through it whenever he has a chance or has the time. He has his own spaces in the house that are completely his, that he can decide when and how he wants to organize or rearrange those items. And that has worked for us in our relationship of, gosh, now, how long has it been? 15 years or more? I'm not good on dates. Yeah, time flies. So when it comes to the mail that I need to go through, I do all the budgeting and finances in our home. So I will put that information right here on the shelf. And about every week or so, I will go through those items and decide if it's a bill that needs to be paid or if it's something for my kids school stuff, I will go ahead and put it in my planner. But I like to set it right here on the shelf because I walk by it every day and it's a constant reminder and trigger for me to sort through those items and decide and go through the things that I need, I need to pay or can be thrown in the garbage. Now let's talk closets. This is a space that can get cluttered up really fast. I definitely love my clothes, but a few tricks that I've learned along the way that have helped me in the decluttering process and just to really simplify things. I like to call this the hanger trick. Now I have seen this several places around the internet, but let me show you exactly what it is. What you want to do is every time that you have worn a piece of clothing is turn it around the opposite way of what you normally would. That way you can have an objective idea when you're going through your closet and you can really see what you have actually worn. I know a lot of times we think that we're wearing a lot of the items in our closet, but this is a really nice visual aid so we can see because each item that has been turned around shows us that it's an item that we have worn. Now the next thing I want you to do is give yourself a time frame. Maybe a year is a good time frame. I know for me, I live in the Midwest, so the seasons are constantly changing, so a year is good. And if I have not worn that item in one year, I either need to donate it or sell it. If you're anything like me, I often have the battle in my head of, I may wear this sometime, or oh, I should really wear that. But if you haven't worn it in that year or six months or whatever time frame that you've designated, it's time to get rid of it. Another tip that has been really helpful for me when it comes to decluttering this closet is anytime I would bring a new item in, maybe I purchased a cute shirt or a dress, I would then have to take an item out of my closet and get rid of it and donate it. So there were no additional hangers being bought in my house when I maxed out on my hangers that was it. If I ran out of hanger space, it was time to start donating. And my final tip when it comes to decluttering your closet is to decide before you even purchase any items. Do not purchase it unless you absolutely love that item and you're gonna wear it. Don't just buy items because you got a gift card burning in your purse. I know I have one right now for TJ Maxx. But when I go shopping this upcoming week, I really, really have to love the item before I decide to bring it into my home because that is money and time spent on that item. So overall to help you declutter is try not to bring more into your house unless you absolutely love it. And if you do decide to bring more clothes into your closet or your dresser or your bedroom or wherever you keep those things, get rid of something else. All right, are you ready for my final and best decluttering tip? This tip has to do with your everyday experiences and how you view the items in your home. What I want you to do is always be in the decluttering process. And what I mean by that is when you are in your home, going through items, touching items, going through laundry, putting things away, always have a dialogue going on in your head is, is this an item that still continues to bring our family use or is it just something that I'm holding on to for whatever reason? Make sure that it has a specific purpose and function in your life. And if it does it, maybe it's time to donate that item. The less items that you have in your home, the more time you have to spend on the things and the people that you truly love. Now that's not to say you have to have a completely minimal lifestyle with nothing in it, but be sure to fill your home with the things that 
mean the most to you. Time is so valuable that it's something that we can never ever get back. And I don't know about you, but I absolutely love a clean and decluttered home, but I love spending time with my family and friends. So the less time that I can spend cleaning and better systems that I have in place to keep me organized, it's a win-win in my book. So take a good look around your home and think of the items. Maybe you have a collection of things that maybe don't serve the same function that they did in the past. Or maybe you just have items set in a place because that's where it ended up staying, but it doesn't really need to be there. Maybe it could be put in another location that would be more efficient for you and your family. Make some decisions, but Oftentimes we are in our homes and we just get really accustomed to the things around us. But I want you to do is take an objective stance and look around your home and make sure that all the items are in a place that serve a function that bring you joy. But since I've been on the whole decluttering journey and just really simplifying our lives, anytime I'm shopping or bring something in, I'm always thinking to myself, okay, where is this item going to go? And is it something that's really going to be useful for our family? And if it isn't, it doesn't belong in my home. Maybe it belongs in someone else's home. So train yourself and continually practice to be in that decluttering process. The less you can bring into your home, the more you have time for the things that you truly love and make your home a place that you never want to leave.